Mr. Cheney's implications raise other questions, of course. If Mr. Obama's response was low-key, speaking out three days later, what to make of Mr. Bush's five days of silence after the shoe bombing attempt? Never demanding accountability for those failures, let alone his own, on August the 6th, 2001, to act on a CIA briefing entitled, Bin Laden Determined to Attack Inside the United States. Mr. Bush just told his briefer, all right, you've covered your ass now. Mr. Cheney also did not explain why this suspect should be interrogated at Gitmo when he has already given up his liaison and the bombing expert who equipped him while being held by the FBI in Michigan. Mr. Cheney did not mention his administration's thinking in giving Abdul Muttalib a visa last year or letting him fly into Houston in August of 08 after associating with radical militants as president of his school's Islamic society. And if they, the Bush-Cheney administration, were more serious about terrorism, why did they implement a policy last year that Senator Dianne Feinstein now says prevented the suspect from getting on the no-fly list. And why did it take Mr. Obama to get serious about al-Qaeda's presence in Yemen, backing airstrikes that took out dozens of al-Qaeda there this month? One raid killed an al-Qaeda operative who was planning an attack on the British embassy after being set free from Gitmo by the Bush-Cheney administration. Much like two leaders of a new al-Qaeda offshoot in Yemen and Saudi Arabia were also set loose by Mr. Bush and Mr. Cheney. Why? Quoting the Washington Post, they were sent to a Saudi rehabilitation program that uses dialogue and art therapy to reform militants. Joining us now is MSNBC political analyst Richard Wolf, also a senior strategist at Public Strategies and author of Renegade, The Making of a President. Richard, good to see you as always. Good to be with you, David. White House Communications Director Dan Pfeiffer, Pfeiffer posted an online uh, statement that Mr. Obama does, in fact, know we are at war, writing, quote, The difference is this. President Obama doesn't need to beat his chest to prove it. And unlike the last administration, we are not at war with a tactic, i.e. terrorism. Read between the lines. Okay, so they're being very restrained here. Maybe they don't want to beat their chests about their actual record on what the last gang called the war on terror. But we, we can maybe explain a little bit. If this president, as Dick Cheney suggests, is pretending that he's not at war, then he's not pretending very well. He's trebled, more than trebled, the number of troops in Afghanistan, which just so happens to be what they call, they used to call, the central front in the war on terrorism. That's where the core leadership of al-Qaeda is. And for Dick Cheney, those those are the people who actually attacked America on 9-11. So, you know, the idea that he's pretending not to be at war doesn't stack up with his record. And the focus on al-Qaeda as opposed to Saddam Hussein and his so-called weapons of mass destruction is actually on point. It's a relevant thing. And the only pretense here is Dick Cheney's forgetful pretense about his own record. On some level, does Dick Cheney realize that Abdul Muttalib uh, his very existence as a radicalized Muslim, as a bomb-carrying passenger on a plane, are all literally traced back to the Bush-Cheney administration. And could that explain why Dick Cheney's coming out so hard now? I'm not sure that in Dick Cheney's world there's enough room for self-doubt. You know, he's the defender of a, a weak and fearful country. He's the sole defender. And so the idea that he may be linked to anything that's happened, I don't think even approaches his consciousness. What is going on here is that he's trying to put together, he and a number of Republicans we've seen, in the last couple of days, trying to put together, humpty dumpty like, this old narrative the Democrats are weak on terrorism or national security. And of course, it doesn't stack up. It doesn't stack up, not least because of Richard Reed, a guy who used the same explosive to try to do the same thing, bring down an American jetliner. And where did he get tried? Where is he now residing with uh, out parole and a life sentence on American soil in a civilian prison, not tried as an enemy combatant, tried in a civilian federal court in Boston, Massachusetts? So the narrative really doesn't stack up to what we saw oh, during the Bush years. We dinged uh, former Bush Homeland Security Secretary Tom Ridge, um, but he's been mostly nonpartisan on this, as have many Republicans. But Cheney didn't even manage to say anything about condemning the attack, reassuring America, not even lip service to traditional American values. Are we starting to see Cheney go off the rails more publicly this time? 
Well, when you speak to former Bush administration officials, they say uh, not just with uh, Cheney, but also with Karl Rove, they suffer from this problem of not having people to sort of put a lid on their opinions. This is all the unfiltered stuff that uh, they used to have to sort of keep a lid on. Uh, but I actually think, look, Cheney doesn't feel the need to reassure the nation. This is political opportunities, opportunism. Uh, maybe he sees this as a, uh, he sees President Obama as a repudiation. He ought to, a repudiation of of the Bush record, of his own record, of that kind of politics. This is an attempt to re-inject fear and patriotism as they worked for in 2002 and 2004 back into the national dialogue. To that end, we see al-Qaeda essentially popping up in Yemen, Somalia, even Saudi Arabia becoming al-Qaeda strongholds. Um, if only because Mr. Obama strikes out at them, what does it all do to Mr. Cheney's record of focusing on Afghanistan and then Iraq? Well, I, I don't think he really did focus on Afghanistan. When Richard Reid was trying to light his shoes so incompetently, it, Dick Cheney was thinking already, uh, we know from multiple records, about Iraq. And, and this is the fundamental flaw here, the fundamental strategic, systemic, if you will, mistake and blunder of the Bush years to ignore what were once considered. I had a conversation with senior military folks in the White House after 9-11. They said they were going to go for the low-hanging fruit. That was Yemen, the Horn of Africa. They missed it. They, they took their eye off the ball. Richard Wolf, Richard, interesting stuff. Thanks so much for coming in tonight. We appreciate it as always.